Right, your petrol gauge is located underneath the uh, first aid kit at the back window. Under the, open the lid, take out your first aid kit and undo four screws, one, two, three, four, and lift that uh, plastic box thing out and then you find your fuel transmitter. The, uh, there's the uh, petrol gauge and will float actually and that's the plug I was just taking the plug off the top of it you get a pair of pliers and undo the screw at the bottom of the tube and then dismantle it this is the end piece that goes on the bottom of the tube just make sure all the slots and that and the holes are clean I just cleaned this one out and that's the bottom piece and this is the tube the petrol goes in Make sure that tube is clean on the inside. I got a rag and cleaned this one out. You can see there's a few fine wires around it, uh, resistance wires, and it has a little resistor at the top and everything. And uh, when it, the, the float, that's the float that slides up and down. And at the bottom of it, it has a brass ring. And when it gets down to this point down here, it makes a contact from underneath and that's your uh, reserve tank light indicator and what I did I cleaned up whoop, cleaned up the contact which is just there make sure the float goes up and down freely just uh, plug your tube in to your socket up there, a little hangover, and turn the ignition on and see what happens. We're not uh, completely low because I can't get the tube down flat enough to I'll tap it and try and get the uh, flow to go right to the bottom to show empty. Yeah, well, I couldn't get the uh, tube on a uh, vertical position. So uh, I'll wait and see once it's back together and in the car. Meanwhile, we'll carry on. Well, here we are. We have the seats out of the car now, as you can see. It's, and uh, they're being reupholstered. And the other day, I uh, cleaned the interior upholstery of the car and the windows on, on the inside. Uh, and I have a dash mat to go over this uh, dashboard though. You can buy clip-on ones that uh, cover that dashboard in America, but they're left-hand drive. They don't make right-hand drives. So I've just got a dash mat to go over that. And uh, so the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, touch up the paint. There's little chips around the door, so you can see the little chips down there and around the uh, petrol cap lid and um, where they banged it with the hoses and that. So I'm just going to go around the car and try and repair all the little chips with some touch-up paint and then I'll wash and polish the car, throw the upholstery back in and uh, I'll have a different uh, blue slip man coming out and we'll try our luck with the blue slip again well here we are we've uh, re-upholstered the seats the upholstery came from America and I had the guys here fit them the quality of the fabric is uh, very good it's only uh, a vinyl but the stitching is isn't that good See the stitchings out there and that but overall it uh, nobody would notice it's a pretty uh, reasonable sort of a look all I need is a couple of pieces of carpet for the floor down here and I uh, put a dash mat on uh, our Sun gets very hot here and it'll crack up your dashboard in no time whilst I was at it I gave the car a wash and a polish all round 
and in my mind this car is ready to go exhaust brakes front end engine and uh, now the upholstery all I need now is for the man to come and hopefully uh, sign off the car with a blue slip well the good news is we finally got a blue slip for the car yesterday I took it around to the mechanics a different mechanic to the buff head that had me change uh, control arm bushes for no reason he also changed the kit on the left hand front brake calibre which also had nothing wrong with it and rang me up to tell me so so I've, I finally went to someone that's obviously got some common sense and uh, got a blue slip and got the car registered now I can drive the car the, uh, I can find out all the problems like this the steering wheel has too much play so I've got to pull up the steering box this is the thermal uh, vacuum valve I'll show it to you there it is this uh, valve controls the exhaust gas uh, recirculation uh, EGR valve off the engine and it was broken since I've had the car one of the stems has broken off and I bought a new one uh, in Australia at Silver Star Mercedes parts here they want $200 plus $20 tax GST $220 I go on the internet to Pelican Parts or Eckler's or one of those and it's $30 US. That means the actual part probably costs $10 US to manufacture. The uh, postage from America to Australia is $28. So that makes $58 US. And because our dollar is only worth about 80 cents or something US, I don't know why, being one of the uh, wealthiest countries in the world with natural resources our dollar is so low I suppose it's probably to do with the internationals who own our country anyway the difference in the exchange is say ten dollars and I'll tell you that was a saving I put on my glasses here saving whoops fine piece of paper with my costings saving one hundred and thirty two dollars and fifty cents Australian just by importing it and the in industry here say support Australia what a lot of what a joke they buy the product in from overseas for ten dollars US and sell it to me for 220 so and that's why everyone here orders their parts overseas it's so much cheaper I thought I'd show you where that uh, thermal vacuum valve is it's this one here and as you can see one of the pins is broken off and it switches the uh, exhaust gas recirculation one over here and uh, what I did I plumbed it direct straight off the vacuum and the reason was that uh, besides that being broken I didn't want to scare any mechanic seeing a bit of uh, smoke come out the exhaust pipe the valve when it reaches uh, 50 degrees uh, Celsius it switches on the EGR valve and uh, the reason for that is I suppose for the, till the car warms up and there you have it. That uh, play in the steering is actually play in the steering box and so uh, we're going to have a look at that. It wasn't in the coupling or the uh, any of the linkages under the car because they're all new. Rightio, we're going to have a go at pulling up the steering box. Uh, you have to make sure it is a steering box and not tie rod right ends or linkages or anything like that. In our case we know that they're all being changed or in good condition. The steering box is located down here under the exhaust manifold and uh, I'll try and show you the adjustment nut. I'll put a torch down in there. See that uh, it's slightly damp. I put a bit of WD-40 on it, trying to.
clean it off a bit and loosen it up. Uh, it's, a, it's a 19 mil locking nut and in the centre is uh, a worm that takes a 6 mil allen key. The only problem is getting at the rotten thing down in there. It's uh, You need a, a half inch bit and everything with uh, angle pieces on it and I'm going to give it a try now and see if I can undo that locking nut. Well I tried my hardest to uh, adjust the steering box from the top going by instructions that I've read and it completely didn't work. The lock nut was so tight uh, on the adjusting screw that uh, I've decided to uh, pull the steering box out. Maybe just as well because it has a minor leak anyway so I can change any seals that need changing. First thing we've got to do is siphon the uh, the power steering fluid out of the uh, container here so we suck some of that out and then uh, I'll get underneath and disconnect the the lines that go to the steering box and drain them out. Well I siphoned out the uh, reservoir for the uh, power steering fluid. I used a, uh, a, a syringe that you use to uh, re-ink the printers and uh, a little bit laborious but it comes out. Next I removed the heat shield, just three little screws that hold it onto the car so I can get at the uh, steering coupling underneath the car. It's very nice and tight under the car and to, to get at that coupling is quite awkward. I've got to get to a, I think it's a six mil head screw which is facing the wrong way on the other side so I'm going to have to mark the, where the steering is, spin it around so I can undo it. But I think I'll take this plate that bolts from the bottom of the steering off just to make life a little easier. But uh, first off, I'll undo these screws and drain the, the lines out for the fluid to the steering box. And then later, I'll undo the tie rod ends and that off the end of the pitman arm and then I'll unbolt it from up on this side and drop it down. Well, this is a job I'd recommend you get somebody else to do if you have the money. Uh, you can see the coupling down there. I've got the cover off from the inside of the car. I can't undo the uh, Allen head uh, key on the other side. Uh, so I undid the one on this side, whoops, and I hope I have enough space and everything to pull the gearbox off and just take it off from the steering wheel shaft. I used a ball joint puller like this to uh, take off those ball joints there off the uh, pitman arm and there's a pitman arm, no, no it isn't, anyway it's up in there somewhere and I've undone the hoses that go into the gearbox and I'm just letting any oil run out now and uh, the steering box sorry I'm just letting any oil run out now and uh, I'll have a coffee and come back and then I'll unbolt the uh, steering box from the inside bolts here well I would highly recommend not uh, playing around with the steering box it weighs a ton uh, I had a fight to get the rotten thing out but I couldn't completely take it out because my car has uh, had the exhaust system changed and even though I unbolted one side of the manifold I couldn't uh, get the steering box out without dropping the whole exhaust system but uh, what I could do was uh, swing the steering box around and uh, with the help of a mash hammer undo the uh, locking nut on the adjustment screw and I put an allen key in the adjustment screw and uh, knocked it around a half a turn uh, because I wasn't sure about what amount 
to give it and uh, and rebolted the steering box back in it was a uh, quite an ordeal but it's uh, also I left the locking nut loose uh, which is not advisable because it'll leak oil once you start the engine with the pump going um, so I could adjust it from the top if need be so in the future I can uh, undo that locking nut uh, from the top and put an Allen key in it and hopefully just tap it a little bit more. So far on this car I've spent uh, six and a half thousand dollars which is uh, uh, one and a half thousand more than I budgeted for. I budgeted five thousand and uh, that would uh, make the car a total of um, ten thousand dollars all up to purchase and restore. I'm not counting the uh, insurance for the car or the registration fee because you have to pay that regardless, it's not the car's fault. So all up I suppose in the end of the day by the time I, if I have to change a coupling down there off the steering or other things I've got to regas the air conditioner and that. So you might as well say the total cost of this car would be 7000 uh, so all up $12,000 and uh, so anyway that's the end of the show for this big stuff I'll just do the little stuff on the car and let you know how I proceed with that. Well the uh, air conditioner gassed successfully I have a slight problem with the cruise control and it's probably the module behind the speedometer uh, which I'll do one day, that's just a minor happening. Uh, the brakes pulling to the left was the master cylinder, I changed that. And, the, and it wasn't the steering coupling, the steering box just need pulling up. So that's the end of the story for this car.